Hello guys, uh, good morning, welcome back. Yeah. Uh, today I would like to uh, discuss with you regarding the materials on place. So after you know the uh, the promotions and then the product and then price and finally uh, it is placed. So place is also called as marketing channel. So today. The topic will cover a supply chains and the value delivery network, the nature and importance of marketing channels, uh, channel behavior and design and management, and also the public policy distribution decisions, retailers, wholesalers, and also I will show you the future of retailing. Came uh, back to the concept of supply chains and the value delivery method. So we look at here, and then uh, yeah, at the right slides. Uh, this is uh, the upstreams and this is downstream. So uh, the the most important thing is uh, we want to know the value delivery network. If we talk about value delivery network, is value is it can be product and can be service. So, uh, product or service provided by uh, suppliers. If we talk about products, and there uh, will be raw materials and packaging suppliers, and they send to the store, and yeah, they send to the store including the tool, equipment, spare parts, and it is called a primary and secondary states of manufacturers. Okay, after it is manufactured, then they, they go to the distributors. And the distributors they will send a finished goods store and finally go to the home customers or export customer so the value delivery methods or a value delivery network is a firm suppliers distributors and ultimately customers could partner with other to improve the performance of the entire system um sorry and this is the, yeah, the nature and importance of marketing channels. So uh, channels here, we call it place. And uh, I think it's, we will focus on how channel members adding values. And we have a terminology called intermediaries. So intermediaries will over produces greater efficiency in making goods available to the target market. So. Uh, through their contacts, experience, specialization, skill of operations, intermediaries usually offer the firm more than it can achieve on its own. Um, yeah, if we look at here from economic uh, point of view, intermediaries uh, transform the assortment of products into assortment wanted by the customer. So uh, it means that they know uh, the characteristic of customers and the needs and the wants of the customers and they try to uh, yeah to set up they try to sort out uh, the needs of the customer and also there's the channel members uh, adding value by uh, bridging the major time place positions gap that separate goods and services from those who would use them yeah i think for more detail we can take a look here how channel members adding values there are two kinds of uh yeah um channel members framework the left one we call it the, 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 the manufacturers and the customer so from the manufacturer directly go to the customer here and we have uh, nine combinations and if you look at here there is a distributors in between manufacturer and the customer so the manufacturer uh, the distributors is trying to um, absorb okay try to absorb or try to receive everything from the manufacturers and then there is a system for uh, assortment okay a system for structuring what the customer want and they send to the customer okay so uh, there will be uh, here there will be six contacts compared to nine contacts on the left 
and uh, how channel members adding values they are one two three four five six seven eight it's uh, characteristics and the first one is informations so the catering and distributing marketing research and intelligence it means that this is the job for the marketing people to see and to understand what the customer wants and uh, they, 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 we can do as marketing we can do research and intelligent to observe okay and this information is very useful and that information is uh, collected by the distributors or the intermediaries for example and also promotion we can set up the promotions this is a development and spreading persuasive communications about an over and then a contact Yes, I think it's clear enough that the contact is finding and communicating with the prospective buyers matching uh, the shop and fit the offer to the buyer's needs including activities such as manufacturing, grading, assembling, and packaging. Negotiation is also yeah, uh, how to reach an agreement on price and other terms of the offer so that the ownership or positions can be transferred. And we also have physical distributions, uh, transporting and storing goods, financing is accruing uh, and using funds to cover the cost of carrying out the channel work and also risk taking, assuming the risk of carrying out the channel work. So these eight uh, values uh, will be, uh, I mean, uh, interchange, okay, that, uh, that will be uh, delivered to the customer. And this one is number of channel levels. So this is a, uh, yeah, if we look at the type of customer, there will be customer marketing channels and business marketing channel. So if we look at the customer, so customer, it means that the end customer, so from producers can be directed, uh, directly can be directly uh, delivered to the customers and this one is producers as well through the retailers and can be from the wholesalers and retailers and it is called consumers but here we call it business consumers so this is a uh, kind of B to B and the left one is B to C B to C is business to the customer and B to B is business to business so business to business, it means that the product can be resold, right? It can be resold uh, to other uh, customer. All right. So uh, there are conventional and vertical marketing system that related to uh, channels. Uh, the, the first one is conventional distribution system. So what is the keyword for conventional distribution system? It consists of one or more independent producers, wholesalers, and retailers. And this is the, the character of a conventional distribution system. So it's, it's, it means that it can be producers, wholesalers, or retailers seeking to maximize its own profit. And there is a little control over the other members and no formal means for assigning role and resolving conflicts. So they are independent. But how, how about vertical marketing system? I think it's a new one. This is uh, the newer uh, uh, versions of uh, system. Okay. So vertical marketing system provide channels, leadership and concepts of producers wholesalers and retailers acting as a unified system. This is an integrated system. It consists of uh, corporate marketing system, contractual marketing system, and administered marketing system. So if we look at more, uh, we are interested in vertical marketing system actually, and we have corporate vertical marketing system. It is to integrate successive stages of production and distribution under single ownership so this one is single ownership and how about contractual marketing uh, system it consists of independent firms at different levels of production and distribution who join together through contracts to obtain more economic of sales uh, impact than it could achieve 
loan. So the most common one is franchise organizations. Okay. So um, yeah. Uh, uh, I think uh, we can see uh, the main difference between conventional and uh, practical one means that the practical is a unified system. So everyone, everybody works together. But conventional is look, it looks like a, a independent system. It means that everyone has their individual objective and they work uh, individually. Okay, and we, we, we look at the franchise organizations. So this is a very famous vertical marketing system uh, that links several stages in the production distribution process. One example of is manufacturer sponsor retailer franchise system the uh, the example like Ford and then manufacturer sponsor wholesaler franchise system example Coca Cola and then service firm sponsor retailer franchise system uh, example of Burger King so franchise is actually a form of business by which the owner uh, franchiser of a product service and method obtains distributions through affiliated dealers or franchises okay then uh, we look at the multi-channel distribution system and there there is a new uh, approach with it, 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 it is called hybrid marketing channel so multi-channel distribution system or hybrid marketing channels are uh, conditions when a single firm set up two or more marketing channels to reach one or more customer segment so they can uh, for example here uh, this is the manufacturing and uh, the use uh, catalogs telephone internet for crap uh, crapping the consumer segment one mm, and then this one it, 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 this company also applies retailers this company also applies distribution uh, distributors and dealers and this company also apply uh, sales force okay and then uh, this channel this designs uh, design decisions um, also we have intensive distributions exclusive distributions and selective distributions so intensive distribution is I think is a uh, clear enough that in example with candy and toothpaste that you can find the products uh, available in any place okay and exclusive uh, from the name we you know that exclusive is uh, it is uh, for luxury products like automobiles and prestige clothing and selective distribution is, is uh, specific okay specific place for specific product for example for televisions and home appliance and next one is retailing this is very interesting retailing so retailing includes all activities in selling products or service directly to final consumers for their personal and non-business use so one example if you go to the supermarket you can find many products okay from many companies and retailers are business who sells from primarily from retailing so uh, regarding the amount of service they 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 use uh they, they apply sell service limited service and full service retailers and also we talk about product line and we have lengths and breadth of products as i just mentioned that you can find many products from uh fruits meals snacks uh, until for for example your hobbies fashions and etc okay and we also have relative prices yes price structure that is used by the retailers can be uh it means um can be dynamics and uh, mean that a similar price sometimes you can find the discount uh 50 percent off until 90 percent off and buy by one get one free for example and other other uh relative price promotions okay and also retail organizations can be independent corporate or contractual ownership organizations so the types of retailers according to the product line we have specialty stores that narrow product line with deep assortment 
and we have department store just as just mentions uh, that consists of wide variety of product lines convenience stores okay one example with 7-eleven or circle k is convenience stores the uh, it is uh, similar to department store but it's uh, smaller okay and a limited line of high turnover products this is limited line of ter high turnover products or goods okay a number of product is very limited and then we have a supermarket low cost low margin self service uh, one example if um, for example um, hero supermarket or uh, transmart okay transmart in the supermarket they have a supermarket and also category killers deep in category with sales stuff okay and the type of retailers uh yeah uh, in terms of pricing they have discount stores i don't know in um, yeah uh, maybe in indonesia it, it is similar to factory outlets so you have a specific uh, special store that uh, yeah uh, promoting products with high discount for example and then we also have uh sorry uh, also have uh, off price retailers and also a warehouse club so warehouse clubs is uh, usually used for uh, for uh, offering products with a uh, lower price there is uh, in a specific day for example like a bazaars right in indonesia maybe um, you can Take a look, uh, uh, Kedawung, right? Kedawung that uh, that selling uh, kitchenware, for example, like that. Okay, and they open bazaar uh, on uh, weekend. And uh, retailers uh, marketing decisions actually also uh, the same uh, with the. Uh, the theory that you already learned so far so they also apply segmentation targeting differentiations and positionings that involving the definition and profile of the market so other retail marketing decisions can be made so i think it's the, the same thing okay and then for future retailing the future retailings have to consider what non-store retailing okay non-store so they don't have any stores like online okay like we, we we know tokopedia and then you know uh, many online platform right e-commerce and retail conversions the merging of co consumers producers prices and retailers creating greater competitions for retailers and greater difficulty differentiating offerings and make a retailings mass merchandising and specialty superstores the formations of vertical marketing system and also retail technology global expansions retail store and community so i think right now as we talk about future retailings um uh, it is uh uh can be online retailings okay uh, and supported by uh information technology okay so uh okay and uh, this is a uh, one example of future retailings and it is adopted from amazon go so uh, please take a look it is a uh, two minutes video we, uh, so that you understand the concept of future retailings four years ago we started to wonder what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. 
If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. Okay, we just seen the Amazon Go. So just walk out a uh, supermarket, just walk out convenience store, just walk out retailing. Okay, this is the next generation retail. And then next one is wholesaling. So wholesaling is including all activities involved in selling goods on services to those buying for resale or business use. Okay. So this the keyword is for resale. So you buy with a lot uh, uh, portions, lots portions, lot amounts, and with specific price, special price. I mean, then it is for reselling, and uh, yeah, buying assortment building, pulp breaking, warehousing, transportation, financing, preparing market information, management service, and advice. So all those criteria uh yeah engage in wholesaling and the type for wholesalers we have merchant wholesaler we have brokers or agents i think broker or agents is uh i think it's quite often we heard uh these terms right and manufacturers sales branches and offices so uh if we look at here then the merchant wholesalers it is independently all business own business that takes title to the merchandise it handles and merchants can be uh, yeah it is a uh, full large quantity for manufacturers so merchant uh, wholesalers is quite common that it is a, a company that buy large number of uh, products from for example, from man, uh, Unilevers, for example, Unile Unilevers, uh, um, yeah, Unilevers products, and then um, they will do reselling, okay? And how about brokers or agents? So brokers or agents, they don't take title to the goods, and they perform only a few functions. So they sell complementary products of several manufacturers yeah and then how about manufacturers sales branches and offices i think this is a wholesaling by sellers or buyers themselves rather than true independent wholesalers so it means that i think uh, it, it can be belongs to the manufacturer or belongs to the company so businesses established by manufacturers to sell directly to retailers so I think for manufacturers, sales branches and offices, it is owned by manufacturers itself. But merchant wholesalers, it is owned by business, independent business. So it means that uh, uh, I think it's independent uh, person or company that buy from manufacturers with a large amount. And then the broker or agents, I think it's, it's just, uh, maybe uh, the, the function is not really as much as uh, merchant wholesalers yeah thank you guys uh, I think that is very short uh, final chapter for your marketing uh, course hopefully during this um, pandemic uh, period uh, in your online lecture so you already shifted to the new normal okay um, hopefully that you uh, can learn uh, this lecture with your adjustment time, adjusted time, and 
you get the knowledge. Thank you very much.